All right, let's look at module four, personal, legal, ethical, and organizational issues. When I first look at this, I think, oh, what am I going to cover? But there's so much in this chapter to look at that's, that's fascinating. So we'll look at information privacy and, and how can you improve this? And what are some things to be aware of as an employee or as an employer? And just a reminder, you're all welcome to speed me up to one and a half times if you want to see this quicker or, or even make it slower so you can easily fall asleep at night. <laughs> it's up to you. Privacy issues of email and how, what do we do with data that's collected and, and what should not happen with data that's collected. Let's look at ethical issues. And censorship, that's a big issue in the world today. Really, it really is. Intellectual property and who has rights to some of this like a Joe Rogan podcast. What if somebody just copies it, sends it out somewhere? The digital divide and pros and cons of telecommuting and health, good and bad. Green computing and how can it improve the quality of our environment? So let's look at some of these issues. Employers, definitely, I've done it. We search social networking sites for background information. So somebody's applying for a job. Um, it's quite easy to just Google them and see what, what, they've, what they've been doing. I look, look in Facebook and things like this. Now, monitoring systems, that's a big growth area in software. Employers can absolutely check their employees' activity. In fact, uh, a good friend of mine, he actually teaches at Mesa College, at, in his other work he was doing, um, he had to pretty much check in every so often because the employer could tell how many hours they were on their computer doing their job. That's not Mesa College, but another company he worked for. Um, so a lot of places are actually can monitor, especially for people who are working from home or outside of the office. And then all kinds of organizations from banks and legal firms and all over the Internet, they're gathering more and more personal data. And as you already are aware, sometimes that gets hacked. So we're looking at a lot of information about people's lives is stored all over the place. Government information, health information maybe educational, trafficking, um, traffic, I mean, traffic or any kind of legal issues. So there's a lot of, a lot of data out there and more and more and more being developed, uh, gathered all the time. So there are definitely laws that regulate this collection, but the laws are always seeming to just follow what's going on in the world. Um, there are what are called acceptable use policies. And we would definitely want to make sure there's accountability. If a company is tracking your data, we need to know what's going on with what's happening with that. And maybe it's time to delete some of that stuff. So we really want to minimize invasion of privacy. All of us want to have, I mean, we should want to have very little about our personal information stored somewhere else. Um, like Europe has some very strict rules I'll get to a little later. Um, like they don't even have clubs where you sign up at a company where they get your phone number and all this information. A lot of, they have a lot more rules to minimize this. And if somebody wants your data, make sure you know why that is. And hopefully they'll get rid of it when they don't need it for that. So I'm going to go fairly quickly because you can read all this as well. And we really want to, to minimize the invasion of privacy. So, uh, and in, as I mentioned in the last chapter, there's lots of ways we can try to ensure data accuracy. But literally, right in front of me, I'll shake the paper. I've got a six-year-old letter from a guy who, guess who used to live at this house many years ago, and a check. I don't even know who that is. So there's a lot of inaccurate data and a lot of non-up-to-date data out there for sure. Uh, and this guy is, should be getting a check. It's only $25, but whatever. Anyway, so we should have, we should not, it should not be a secret, the data that's stored on us. And of course, it goes without saying, we should not have unauthorized access. And we keep hearing that in the news again and again and again about people getting, getting access to data that they shouldn't. Um, there are federal laws, the HIPAA law, dealing with um, medical information. And there's just a bunch of laws, but again, they're all there trying to minimize problems and yet, if a company stores a lot of data, your hospital, for example, this college, your bank, if they get hacked, somebody has access to that data that shouldn't have it. Okay, just a few term, terms we'll deal with and um, probably break this chapter into two as well. So spam, that just is a word for unsolicited junk email. We all get that. We, all, we used to get tons of it. 
And a lot of the spam filters in our email system have gotten better and better and better. And then somebody, if you respond to an email, like, hey, get rich quick or something's for free or whatever, then they know it's a valid email and your email address will get sold to other users. So, and here, how about this on email? We should all assume that others can see our messages. Even Bill Gates got in trouble because he had sent an email to one of his employees and that was used, you know, in a legal do as a legal document in court. And this is maybe a surprise to some of you. Any email sent on company-owned computers are the property of the organization. So that's something to be very aware of. If you're working for a company and even on your breaks, you start doing some, some email. Well, it's what the best thing to do is every company is different. Some don't care. Some do care. It's really worth knowing and asking what are, you know, what am I allowed to do and what I'm not, am I not allowed to do? Maybe most companies probably say, sure, during lunch break, you can search for airline tickets. Not a problem, but maybe not during work hours. I don't know. But the company generally has the right to access what you're doing on their computers. And there's a software, there's a lot of software that lets somebody, maybe um, one of the computer network administrators, actually sit there and watch what you're doing. Now, most people aren't sitting around just trying to watch this. But if you've ever been any kind of trick, um, you know, situation where you somebody may think you're doing something like sending data to another company or or wasting time or they just want a good reason to get you in trouble just be aware your email is uh, viewable so there's a lot of places your data is being collected and again a lot of people avoid online purchases because of concerns about hackers uh, I've got one tenant he's always ordering stuff it's just constantly coming through Amazon I prefer to pay cash whenever possible and buy locally so that's just the way i collect rent and cash from some people and i just prefer to pay pay cash you know no one needs to know what i'm doing so um again personal information what you're buying can be sold to other people and and let's look at cookies for a minute i think we'll end on this page so what is a cookie it's just a text file it's just a text file that's put in a web browser and saved on a hard drive. So they're generally were designed good, but they could be bad. So are cookies good or bad? What do you think? What do you think? Is a cookie good or bad? If we were physically in class, I would pause now and get some of your opinions, but I don't get to do that right now. Like if I go to Amazon and I order a CD by BB King, which I don't order CDs anymore, but if I did, they would know that, okay, I just bought a blues CD. So maybe the next time I log in, they would say, hey, there's some CDs by these other blues artists. That would be good. So overall, or for instance, you're logging in your email, not having to type your email address in again and your password. That's good. Now, we all know some bad ones can be put on your computer too. So a cookie is not necessarily good or bad. It's just a text file that's on, put on your computer. And you can say, I don't want any cookies, but then sometimes some things won't help you that much. So again, there's also files that just track what you do, but we want to make sure data collected on the web is interpreted with caution. We all know a lot of people just put other information out there too, that, or make up things. We all probably have done some things anonymously over time. So let me, um, oh, I got time to do one more page. And I'll stop here. So I'll wrap this up as part one and continue in a few minutes with part two.